So, should you buy a Pixelbook in 2020? Let's find out. So the Pixelbook has been out for over two years now, and that may seem kind of old for modern hardware, seeing as things move so fast these days, but I feel it's kind of a timeless device, and I feel it's worth revisiting, seeing as some of the initial reviews of this device by top tech YouTubers were not great. There were complaints about the tablet mode and the overall performance, which is surprising given the relatively high-end specs of this device. Speaking of specs, this particular device has an i5 and 8GB of RAM. That's a lot for a Chrome OS device, seeing as most Chrome OS devices ship with like a Core M processor or a Celeron or 4GB of RAM or even lower. So with 8GB of RAM and an i5, this thing should be fast. It should be great. So what happened? Well, you see, Google is a software company. Not really a hardware company. I mean, sure, they make a bunch of devices, but they're a software company. And quite frankly, when this device came out, the software for it was just bad. That being said, the recent releases have made this device much, much better. As for now, let's talk about the physical attributes of this device. At just 0.4 inches, or 10 millimeters, this thing is super thin. And it only weighs 2.4 pounds. It's incredibly light, and incredibly thin. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's the thinnest device like this I've ever used. The body is all aluminum, except for this glass accent at the top and this rubberized section on the bottom. Granted, some people did not like the two-tone design in this device. I happen to love it myself. But if you hate it, dbrand does make some skins for this device. I should mention they're not a sponsor or anything, but they make great products. I personally think the two-tone design goes really well with the two-in-one form factor of this device. Speaking of which, if we flip it around to tablet mode, things have changed considerably. It's one of the greatest things about Chrome OS. We get updates about every six weeks, and with the recent release of Chrome OS 83 at the time of filming this, tablet mode has gotten an entire overhaul of its UI and everything. I mean, it's very fluid now, whereas before, you can go back and watch some of the older reviews. It was not smooth at all, and now it's just fantastic. Flipping back around to clamshell mode, it has these uniquely gray keys that I've not really seen on other devices. And it's also fully backlit, which is not always a given on Chrome OS devices, which sounds weird coming from Windows devices or anything like that, but yeah, not a lot of Chrome OS devices have backlit keys. In keeping up with the two-tone design of the rest of the device, the keyboard has these silicone wrist rests that feel fantastic when you're typing. The keyboard itself has 8 millimeters of travel, which sounds kind of shallow, but if you can get used to the keyboard layout of Chrome OS, it's a really fantastic keyboard. And while of course you have this really nice touchscreen, you also have this really nice glass top trackpad, which feels great. Moving on to I.O., the device has two USB-C ports, either of which can be used for charging with any USB-C charger up to 45 watts. Along this side, there's also a headphone jack, a physical volume rocker, and a power button. It also has four microphones for what Google calls crystal clear audio, which is great for video conferencing and stuff, but more importantly, it's great for the integrated Google Assistant. The display on this thing is also fantastic. It has a 2400 by 1600 resolution at 400 nits of brightness. So it's not like you're gonna have any problem seeing it anywhere bright. That being said, the device is not perfect, obviously. The webcam is quite frankly abysmal at 0.9 megapixels. As much as I love the design of this device, and as sturdy as it is, there are some strange design quirks with it. Like when you close the device, you can feel kind of the trackpad clicking even when it's closed. And sometimes the trackpad just sticks all together. The bezels are also pretty large for a device this recent. Google claims it's so you have a better time handling it in tablet mode, which as you can see is kind of true, but I feel like they could still be slightly smaller. The speakers are, understandably at this size, not great. I mean, it's not that they're terrible, they just sound kind of shallow. There is a lot of device here for what you're paying for. You can still buy this thing brand new from Google for $1,000. That being said, I could never recommend this thing for $1,000. The great thing about it being two years old is that you can find it 
in great condition used for four to 600 bucks all day long. If you could pick one of these up for like 500 bucks, it would be a great purchase if you do most of your work online. If you're doing heavy workloads like video editing or rendering or anything like that, of course, this is not the device, but most things can be done and done well on the Pixelbook. That being said, I would not recommend one of these as your sole computer. A MacBook Air or a $1,000 Windows machine would serve you much better in that regard. Honestly, this device is really for people who already have a powerful main computer that can do their heavy workloads, like video editing. Or if you could do all of your work online. Or if you just want a super thin, super light, beautiful device that can do 90% of your work. I personally think the two-tone divine. Da. Moving on to. Ba. Fuck. Moving on to I/O. The device has. Fuck. Words. And for more importantly, the built-in Google Assistant. That was the wrong button. The 12.3 inch. Da. The device. Da. It has a 2400 by 1600 resolution. Da. Fucking fuck. The webcam is quite. Da.